My name is Wraith, and they broke the world I loved. They descended in pillars of fire and light, advanced machines of war obliterating our feeble planetary defense. Then came the swarm troops armored in chitin. Our greatest minds, our proudest warriors, all reduced to dust and ruin. When they came for me, a child huddled among the smoking wreckage of what was once my home. It felt less like capture and more like picking carrion from a long-dead battlefield. I learned to call them the Versari. To understand the harsh rasp of their language and accept the sting of their shock whips as a kind of twisted education. For years I lived like an animal. A feral thing skittering at the feet of chrome-limbed conquerors who viewed me with detached bemusement. I was a pet, or perhaps an experiment. Then one day, that changed. A towering Vasari, the one I came to know as the Assessor, examined me. Beneath that insectile helm, I sensed something, but not a hint of sympathy. It was cold calculation. I was weighed and measured, my every physical exploit documented and analysed. Then the training began. They didn't try to break me a second time. They reforged me instead. I learned their weapons. Plasma cutters that could bisect a tank. Magnetic boots that allowed me to defy gravity. My small, humanoid frame was augmented, honed, each ounce of muscle becoming steel-cabled. But true transformation lay in learning to think like they did. Cold logic, tactics devoid of sentiment. I became a weapon a living scalpel to be wielded by the hand of the Empire. They gave me missions, dark, brutal things, assassinations, sabotaging rebellions, crushing defiance on worlds too distant for me to ever hope of saving my own. We warped through the cosmos like vengeful ghosts. On some missions, their warriors fought alongside me. Their spindly metal limbs were unnaturally fast, their aim precise. They were not cruel, merely efficient. I saw the same ruthlessness reflected in myself. Mercy became a weakness I'd purged long ago. Each new objective burned into my mind was a stepping stone on the path they had laid out for me. A tool, a slave. Yet a part of me clung to an identity beyond that. My name is Wraith, and somewhere in that cold, hollow chest beats the faint ember of rage. For now, I serve. But the day they stop watching their pet, their experiment, so very closely, that's the day the reckoning comes. The dropship cut through the void, a streak of tarnished silver leaving a trail like a scar across the star-studded expanse. Inside, the perpetual low thrum felt like a constant weight, the recycled air stale, smelling of ozone and cold metal. For me, it had become the closest thing to comfort in this twisted existence. Across from me, the assessor sat, segmented limbs folded in an unsettling imitation of repose. To my masters, I was too adaptable, too resilient to simply be dismissed as a lesser species. Each mission I carried out, every display of tactical cunning, they watched me with a dispassionate interest that made my skin crawl. You are... Content? The assessor's voice crackled through my neural implant, a harsh, insect-like buzz inside my skull. His primary language was one of rasps and hisses that I'd long since learned. But something about this telepathic communication felt more invasive. Contentment wasn't a concept I dared indulge in. I fulfill my purpose, assessor. I serve. One chitinous limb unfolded, the tip glinting with scalpel sharpness. You question your purpose. The neural scans indicate dissonance. My gut clenched. This wasn't a reprimand, it was an interrogation disguised as concern. My past has no bearing on the effectiveness of my execution assessor. Your efficiency is without fault, he conceded. It was the closest I'd ever come to a compliment from a Versari. Yet, within you persists a... Uh, Residue of defiance, of individuality. These are dangerous. Perhaps fear would have stopped my tongue once, but I'd long outgrown that constraint. If I am dangerous, Assessor, you should decommission me. Long seconds crawled by. Each pulse of that dropship engine pounded in my ears. 
Had I gone too far? They could end my existence with a thought. The neural implant designed to serve them was a death switch in waiting. Finally, the assessor rose, his towering form casting a long shadow over me. An inefficient solution. Your tactical use outweighs the potential risk. For now. The words themselves seemed of little importance. It was the undercurrent of hesitation that set my nerves ablaze. They were considering it. Truly considering my termination. We exited the dropship into a world ablaze, not with the warmth of a sun, but with the acrid fires of rebellion. The world of Kithra, a once lush jungle planet, was now a patchwork of scorched earth and churning smoke. Heretics. The Vasari tolerated no deviation from their grand plan, and even the whispered rumour of insurrection brought swift reprisal. My mission. Infiltrate the rebel encampment and terminate their leader. As I moved with the grace they had forced upon me, I studied my targets. Pathetic, really. A handful of Kithrans with outdated blasters against the might of the Empire. I breached the encampment under the cloak of darkness. The Vasari had provided me with tech that melded me into the shadows, rendering me near invisible as I picked my way through the shelters. Their pathetic security was laughable. These rebels were fueled by desperation, not strategy. I reached their command center, a battered hovel adorned with faded insignia. Inside, three Kithrans poured over a crude hollow map. One, older and weathered, his fur clumped with exhaustion, could only be their leader. Before any could raise an alarm, I was upon them. My blade, a crescent of incandescent energy, cleaved through the air and flesh with near silent precision. The first rebel collapsed without a sound, his body halved by a single strike. The second let out a strangled cry as I disarmed him, literally before my magnetic boots pinned him to the ceiling. The old leader was the only one left. He turned, eyes wide. But even as his trembling hand reached for a blaster, I saw the futility within him. They'd always known defeat was inevitable. This was a scream into the void, not a fight. You're the Empire's dog, he wheezed, his voice laced with disgust and a hint of pity. The insult stung. No, it was worse. It felt right. The truth of it clung to me, a noxious fume I couldn't expel. The leash is tight, rebel, I replied, raising my blade. Do it then, he challenged. End it. I die knowing I fought. What do you die knowing? The question stung. What did I die knowing? What was there beyond the next order, the next extinguished defiance, the ceaseless spread of Vasari rule? The blade hummed in my grip, but I hesitated. Not out of mercy. That weakness had been purged long ago. Something akin to curiosity held me back. The assessor's words resonated in my mind. Was this defiance simmering within me a danger, or the last shred of something that made me more than the Vasari's tool? Wraith! The harsh squawk of my name, telepathically projected by the assessor, tore through my hesitation. He was watching. Always watching. I brought the blade down. The leader shut his eyes, a final act of defiance against his executioner. But as the energy seared through him, my own mind whispered a different truth. I was not merely their executioner. With each order I followed, I was also my own. The energy blade extinguished with a hiss, leaving the stench of seared flesh mingling with the smoke in the air. The leader lay in two neat halves, his expression frozen. I could almost envy him of that certainty, the comfort in knowing what and who he fought for. Extraction point confirmed. Proceed. The assessor's voice crackled in my mind, a relentless metronome keeping time with the blood pounding in my temples. He wouldn't question the completion of the task. He would question my deviation from the standard termination protocol. The swift kill. The clean exit. My moment of hesitation would be noted. Scrutinized. I ignored the mounting unease, focusing on the mission instead. The distraction was welcome. With practiced ease, I hacked into the rebels' crude data network. Troop movements, supply routes, names of sympathizers. Every shred of information poured into my neural implant like bitter poison. This was how I served, 
by becoming a conduit of death and destruction. As I worked, the bodies of fallen rebels lay scattered around me. They stared at the ceiling with glassy eyes, accusing me with their silence. I'd grown accustomed to this morbid tableau, to the chilling efficiency with which I turned lives into statistics. Yet tonight, something grated within me. Was it the old rebel's words, a parasitic seed of doubt lodging in my mind? A noise shattered my morbid contemplation. Sobbing, frantic and childlike, I stalked from the command centre, following the sound with lethal precision. Behind a dilapidated shelter, I discovered the source, a kithran cub, eyes huge with terror, clutching a singed ragdoll. Had I overlooked him? He was little more than a smudge of fur and wide eyes, innocuous, irrelevant. The standard protocol was clear. Eliminate any witnesses. It was a strategic move, one devoid of emotion. The child whimpered as I approached, and that sound, raw and desperate, sliced through me. It brought to mind a different whimper, the mewling plea of a child from a world reduced to ashes. My world. My grip tightened on my weapon, the blade aching to ignite. Yet, I hesitated. To kill an innocent, it felt like crossing a line I wasn't sure I could return from. The child was no threat, and yet his existence became a test my masters had never designed. A test of whether that core the assessor sensed in me was still stubbornly human, or if I had fully succumbed to their design. Leave! One word, forced through a throat tight with conflict. The child scrambled back, more surprised than relieved. His eyes, those wide, innocent eyes, would haunt me. But I turned away, willing my feet to carry me back toward the extraction point. There was still a mission to complete, still a role to play in the grand scheme. But a new, treacherous thought had taken root. Tonight, I'd let something live. Did that make me weak? Or did it make me something else entirely? And in the back of my mind, the question lingered. How long until my masters discovered this disobedience? I made it to the extraction point without incident. The gunship awaited, its lines barely visible against the war-torn landscape. As I settled within its cold metal belly, the familiar hum of the engines did little to quell the disquiet swirling inside me. The assessor, as always, loomed in his position near the cockpit, an unreadable, multi-limbed silhouette. The gunship lurched into the sky, Kithra spiralling away beneath us like a dying ember. Each thrum of the engines drove deeper the wedge between what I had done and what I should have. The mission was successful. Rebellion crushed, tactical data secured. But I was a broken tool, a compromised asset. The silence in the transport stretched thin. The assessor broke it, not with his usual harsh insectoid speech, but through the invasive telepathic channel he used sparingly. You wavered. It was an accusation, not a question. The mission is complete, I retorted. The cub was of no consequence. It sounded weak, even to my own ears. A cub today. A leader of a new rebellion tomorrow. You have begun to question orders. This makes you a liability. His tone was flat, devoid of any true anger, which made it more terrifying. They didn't punish disobedience with brutality. They discarded faulty tools. I serve the Empire, I repeated the mantra, a plea masquerading as conviction. Do you, Wraith? The assessor turned to me, his multifaceted eyes glinting in the dim light. Or does something else stir within you? A ghost of the weak creature you once were. The words hit me. I met his gaze, trying to find a hint of hesitation in those alien eyes, any indication that my secret rebellion still remained a secret. Instead, I saw chilling certainty. They knew. Or at least suspected enough. I will make adjustments. Analyse your recent behaviour. If the discrepancies continue, decommissioning protocols will be initiated. With those clinical words, he turned away, dismissing me as easily as one might swat at a gnat. The cold weight of his judgment settled over me, heavier than any battlefield injury. 
The Vasari weren't going to terminate me immediately. They would watch, waiting for that inner defiance to bloom. I'd become an experiment once more, but this time the stakes were far higher. The rest of the journey passed in a heartbeat. They deposited me at my quarters, a cell barely large enough to turn around in. It was my sanctuary, and now it felt like a prison. For the first time in years, sleep didn't come. I tossed and turned, the image of the Kithran child's terrified eyes seared into my mind. Had I been just as terrified when they tore my world apart? Days, or perhaps what passed for days in my cell, bled into one another. I ate tasteless nutrient rations, trained with brutal intensity and tried to ignore the low hum of dread thrumming through my veins. Each interaction with overseers was scrutinized, conversations reduced to clipped reports and orders. It was a waiting game, and my life was the prize they'd claim if I lost. The assessor, normally content to let the neural implant gather the data he desired, began summoning me. His interrogations weren't overt. He'd engage me in sparring drills, forcing me to push my body and my mind to their limits. Or he'd discuss strategy, hypothetical scenarios of suppressing uprisings on worlds at the periphery of their empire. Each session felt like walking a tightrope with a blindfold on. One misstep, one flash of defiance, and I'd plunge into the void. My only respite existed in the mission simulators. Normally I despised these manufactured battlefields, the way they simplified war, stripping it of its visceral horror. But now, they were a haven. Within their digital constructs, I could disappear. The Kithran child, the rebel leader's haunting question. These faded, as I became a weapon honed by its masters. Here the Vasari could find no fault with me, no trace of the doubt they sought to eradicate. Then came the summons I both feared and anticipated. The assessor's quarters were stark, utilitarian, like every other corner of this vessel. Through the viewport, the smear of the galaxy offered no comfort, just a reminder of the vastness I was trapped within. Your performance is consistent across simulations, the assessor began, his segmented form oddly still. However, in true combat scenarios, there is a uh, hesitation, imperceptible to standard analysis, but I witness it. He was close, too close. There is no hesitation in fulfilling my orders, I countered. Not in your actions, yet in the moments prior. Your efficiency could be unparalleled, but you choose constraint. Why? The room seemed to shrink. I could make a break for it, lash out, perhaps even take down the assessor, but then what? A futile gesture, and nothing more. Hesitation is a symptom of fear, of weakness, I forced the words out. I possess neither. My denial seemed to satisfy him, for now. A return to your homeworld is scheduled, a test of your control. Suppress a minor resurge, eliminate its leaders. His voice held an undercurrent of cruel irony. They knew this would not be a simple mission for me. It will be done. It was a vow, or perhaps a curse, and we both recognized the hollowness of it. I was dismissed. As I walked the cold corridors, a twisted, bitter thought bloomed. They had made the perfect weapon. The only way I could break free was to turn it against them. But first I'd have to return to the grave of my world and confront the ghosts I'd buried in its ashes. The dropship cut through the atmosphere like a blade through scarred flesh. Below me was my home world, or at least what remained of it. Cities were charred craters. Lush forests had been turned to ash dunes. Even the oceans were tainted, an oily sheen marring the vibrant blue I remembered as a child. The other Vasari assigned to this suppression were faceless automatons, the grunts who carried out the Empire's dirty work with blind obedience. I envied them their detachment in a perverse way. We landed outside a cluster of ruins that had once held a semblance of life, a pathetic rebellion clinging to the corpse of their world. As we disembarked, the stench of decay was overwhelming. 
An almost forgotten anger stirred within me, a primal, feral thing. I focused on channeling it, turning it into a weapon. They needed a ruthless executioner, and I would give them that. We swept through the ruins. The rebels were a motley crew, survivors hardened by desperation but ill-equipped to fight the Versari war machine. I moved with calculated brutality, my blade flashing in the smoky light. I took a perverse pleasure in their shocked expressions as they realized I wasn't just one of their overlords, but a monster born of their own destroyed world. Yet, a strange discord arose within me. For every life I took, the ghost of someone I'd loved whispered in my mind. Old neighbors, playmates, distant relatives. They rose from the rubble not to accuse but to question. Was this what I had become? Was this vengeance or self-destruction? The leader of the rebellion was old, his face a map of loss. Disarming him was effortless. He spat at my feet, the action more pathetic than brave. Traitor! He snarled, his voice rough with exertion. Servant dog, fetching for the scraps your masters toss you. I tilted my head, examining him with dispassion. I am the Vasari Empire's will made manifest, I replied, letting my clipped tone sound with the same cruelty I heard from my masters. He stared back. You are a ghost, he whispered. And one day, they'll discard you like the rest of your world's bones. I executed him cleanly, severing his head with precise ruthlessness. His words, though, didn't dissipate like vapor. They clung, a poison far more insidious than the toxic air I breathed. After the assessor summoned me, I stood before him in my blood-stained armor, a trophy they'd molded me into. The mission was swift, efficient, he acknowledged. But there was a fervor unlike prior engagements. My homeworld breeds defiance, I retorted. I merely match their intensity to ensure their swift annihilation. The segmented limbs shifted. I couldn't read his alien posture, but the tension buzzing beneath the surface was undeniable. You have regained your focus, Wraith. This is... satisfactory. Was it? Leaving my dead world behind, I didn't feel satisfaction, only a deeper emptiness. The rebel leader was right. I was a ghost, haunting the remnants of my past, carrying out atrocities I no longer believed in. They had forged me into a weapon. But as I stared at my blood-soaked reflection, I wondered, in my act of rebellion, would this weapon turn against its makers, or be consumed by the shadows they thought I served? My return to the flagship was an exercise in maintaining a mask of obedient indifference. They rewarded my brutal efficiency on my homeworld with cold satisfaction, blind to the tempest stirring beneath the surface. I moved through hallways, nodding to operatives, a spectre in their ranks. Yet, my mind raced. Each step, each clipped command I obeyed was a step towards formulating a plan. My chance arrived with unexpected swiftness. A communication came through, a priority alert. A world called Sorak known for mineral deposits crucial to the Vasari war efforts, was on the verge of rebellion. They needed an infiltrator, someone to blend in and pinpoint the source of the insurrection before it spiralled out of control. They needed me. The irony was a bitter pill to swallow. My skills, honed for extinguishing rebellion, were now their last hope to prevent it. I saw an opportunity, a twisted, precarious path towards defiance. The assessor summoned me. His piercing, multifaceted eyes seemed to bore through my artificial calm. Sorak is unstable. Your unique background makes you an ideal candidate for undercover insertion, he stated. The words clinical, precise. I will serve the Empire, I murmured. The standard response rolling off my tongue like a prayer to a god I no longer believed in. They suspect nothing. Your physical similarities to their kind will allow you unrestricted access. He paused, the silence heavy in the tight confines of his quarters. This is a delicate mission, Wraith. Success is imperative. Failure will carry consequences. The veiled threat was obvious. They still suspected me, 
Each mission was both a test and a trap. I understand the stakes, Assessor, I replied. My preparation was swift and efficient. The Sari tech disguised my augmentations, masking them under an unremarkable Sorakian exterior. My neural implant was reprogrammed with their language, data on their society, and the cover identity they fabricated for me. As the dropship hurled me towards Sorak, I couldn't shake the sensation of diving headfirst into a noose. The rebel leader's haunting words lingered in my mind. You are a ghost. Perhaps for all intents and purposes, he was right. I was no longer the boy they dragged from his burning home, nor was I their loyal killing machine. I was a weapon on a collision course. And if I could make them pay for what they took from me, for what they'd done to countless other worlds, then perhaps being a ghost was a price I was willing to pay. The drop pod hurtled through Sorok's atmosphere like a burning comet. Inside, I was strapped in. My trained physique able to withstand the brutal pressures that would shatter bone. They had confidence in my physical resilience, my ability to handle a harsh transition. What they didn't suspect was the maelstrom raging within me. Fear, determination, and treacherous anticipation. Landing was a jarring, disorienting experience. I emerged from the smoking pod into a bustling Sorakian settlement. The air was humid, and carried the smell of heavy industry. My implanted knowledge of the local dialect buzzed in my skull. It helped, but the sheer act of moving through this alien crowd felt like wading through quicksand. My fabricated identity was that of a low-level trader named Brant, my reason for being here the prospect of securing cheap minerals for export. The Vasari were known for exploiting the desperation of these fringe worlds. I was to become an extension of that ruthlessness. I found a squalid cantina, blending into the throng of weary labourers and disreputable lurkers. The Sorakians were a hunched, scaled people, their eyes reflecting an ingrained suspicion. Conversations in their language swirled around me, a mix of complaints about work conditions and hushed rumours of an underground movement. The seed of rebellion was here. Outsider! A rough voice barked, pulling me from my observations. A massive Sorakian loomed over me, scales shimmering with the greasy patina of the mines. What brings you to our pit? My Sorakian form felt clumsy, the words hesitant. Brant trader seeking opportunities. I kept the response clipped, playing on the expected arrogance of an off-worlder. He grunted, a surprisingly thoughtful sound. Opportunities bleed miners dry, outsider. But come. He motioned towards a rickety table. You wish to hear of our woes. Perhaps there's coin in that for me. As we sat, my skin prickled with the constant threat of being exposed. I had to build trust, all while steering the conversation towards uncovering the heart of the rebellion. It would be a dance on a razor's edge. One wrong phrase, one unnatural gesture and my guys would crumble. Hours bled into one another as I bought the minor drinks, the crude liquor burning my throat but easing his tongue. He spoke of overseers, quotas, whispers in the dark. Names floated in the foul air. Lauren, Jessa. Figures mentioned with equal parts fear and reverence. I committed them to memory. Tiny threads in the greater conspiracy. Finally, as the sun began its descent, he gave me what I needed. The whispers, he slurred. They speak of a gathering. Out in the wastes, two cycles hence. Seek the rock spire. They'll be there. His payment secured, he collapsed into a drunken stupor. I left the cantina, heart pounding in my chest. I had my lead. Now came the most dangerous part. I had to inform the Vasari of this gathering feigning loyalty even as I laid the groundwork for their ambush to backfire. The next few days, to maintain my cover, I played the ruthless trader. I haggled with miners, securing false mineral contracts, the very image of the exploitative offworlder the Sorakians loathed. The revulsion in their eyes became a shield, keeping me at a distance I needed. 
Through my neural implant, I sent an encrypted report. The plan I proposed wasn't brilliant, but it was raw and brutal. Exactly what they'd expect of me. I requested a strike force to ambush the rebel gathering, painting a picture of swift suppression that would appeal to their thirst for order. The waiting was agony. Each moment I spent among the Sorakians felt like pressing my hand against a smouldering brand. Discovery would be swift and merciless. Yet every sneer or muttered curse fueled the icy fire in my gut. The reply from the assessor came through, cold and measured. Your proposal is sound. Strike force will be dispatched. You are to remain undercover until after the ambush. Success will be recognized. The night before the raid was tense beyond measure. I found myself drawn to the edge of the settlement, gazing out at the barren wastes where the whispers spoke of a rock spire. This was it. The culmination of a plan birthed in desperation, fueled by an anger simmering for years. Movement caught my eye. A lone Serakian figure, cloaked against the dust storms, emerged from the gloom. It was the miner, Surprisingly alert for someone who'd spent the prior evening drinking himself senseless. Suspicion troubled me. Was this a trap? He approached, scales rasping against the windswept sand. Outsider, he hissed warily. The eyes of the Empire are upon you. My gut clenched, my cover was blown. What are you? He cut me off. The whispers. They carry far. We hear how you play your part well. He reached into his cloak, and for a heart-stopping moment I expected a weapon. Instead, he produced a crude datapad. Information. For the rebellion. The air felt thin in my lungs. Why? I managed to choke out. His scaled face twisted in a sardonic grin. They bleed us dry, outsider, but they bleed too, and we saw that in your eyes, a different kind of hunger. He shoved the datapad at me. It contained troop movements, security codes, vital intel for turning the Vasari ambush into a massacre. I play my part too, he said, turning to leave. Now, it's time to play yours. As he disappeared back into the settlement, I stood there, stunned. He'd seen through my disguise, sensed the simmering rage beneath. Yet, he'd also seen a potential weapon against their mutual oppressors. We were pawns on a brutal board. But for a fleeting moment, a pawn decided whose side he'd fight for. The rock spire rose from the wasteland like a skeletal finger accusing the harsh sky. I approached it with an assassin's precision, not the bumbling gait of a greedy trader. The datapad thrummed in my pocket, a lifeline connecting me to a rebellion that, until days ago, had been nothing more than a whisper. The Vasari strike force materialized as if summoned from the dust itself. Insectile figures, encased in gleaming armor, with movements far too quick to be merely organic. I slipped among them, playing the part of the panicked off-worlder caught in the crossfire. They paid me no heed, focused entirely on their orchestrated massacre. As we neared the spire, a prickling sensation washed over me, the neural implant buzzing with an incoming transmission from the assessor. Wraith, report in, his voice crackled through, laced with the barest hint of suspicion. Ambush imminent, I replied. Rebels gathered as anticipated, requesting immediate extraction once the operation is complete. Extraction will be provided. Your efficiency has been commendable, he replied, and through the static I sensed he was unsure of his final word. The spire loomed closer. Crouched behind it, I saw them, the rebels. Not an army, but a pitifully small band, their weapons cobbled together. Their leader, Jessa, a Serakian, with eyes burning with haunted defiance, spotted me. Shock registered on her face, quickly replaced with searing suspicion. My hesitation lasted a fraction of a second. Then, I made my choice. Ripping the sensor transponder from my arm, I hurled it into the encampment. The beeping began, loud and insistent. Confusion ripped through the Vasari strike team. Sensor malfunction, one began, but I didn't wait to hear the rest. I charged into their midst, my stolen blade igniting in a blaze of energy. They were taken off guard, 
trained for crushing a meek rebellion, not combating one of their own. Cries rang out in the night, punctuated by the sound of energy weapons. I carved through the Vasari with brutal efficiency, their armor proving a weak shield against the rage channeling through me. Yet they were many, and I was one. A blaster shot grazed my arm, searing flesh in a sudden flash of agonizing heat. The battle was a maelstrom, screams, the stink of singed metal, the cries of the rebels. Jessa fought beside me, her initial distrust replaced by a grim alliance born of a common enemy. The tide began to turn. The rebels, emboldened by my actions, fought like cornered animals. One by one, their technologically superior foes fell. As the last Vasari soldier, the massive commander, charged at me, Jessa flanked him, a blaster bolt scorching his chitinous armor. We fought back to back, a storm of fury against a foe. With a final earth-shattering blow, I severed the commander in half. His lifeless halves crumpled to the ground. The remaining Vasari ships, their mission in tatters, retreated into the night sky, leaving behind a scene of smouldering destruction and hard-won victory. Jessa approached me, weariness on her face. You fought well, she said, her voice rough. I had no choice, I replied, the metallic tang of blood coating my tongue. But the truth was more complex. Choice. That was the thing they'd taken from me. My world. My life. Now, I had a choice. I could leave. A ghost forever adrift. Or I could stay, fight alongside these brave souls, and make the Vasari pay for what they'd done, not just to my world, but to countless others. I'm not leaving, I declared. They took everything from me. Now let's take back what's theirs. Jessa's lips curved into a smile. Welcome to the rebellion, she said. We could use someone with your skills. Sorok burned. Not with the swift brutality of my own world's fiery demise, but in a slow bleed. Weeks turned into months, and the initial victory was a fading ghost amidst the tightening grip of Versari reprisal. Theirs was not the vengeance of rage, but of methodical oppression. The rebellion fractured, brave but outmatched. Jessa died in a nameless skirmish, extinguished amidst countless others. My own combat prowess meant little against a faceless legion that replaced each fallen drone with ten more. Each clash was a gasp for air in a sea of chitin and cold calculation. And through it all, the assessor's eyes haunted me. Each narrow escape, each brutal interrogation of captured rebels was proof. I was no longer a hidden threat, but a marked one. The hunt was exhilarating and suffocating in equal measure. The end came without fanfare. A raid on our supply depot went wrong. A traitor in our midst, or perhaps sheer crushing luck on the Vasari's part. Either way, I watched comrades die their sacrifice buying me mere minutes to slip away like a rat into the blasted wasteland. Sorok became a tomb, my footsteps a fading imprint on its scarred surface. I stole a Vasari transport, not through any grand plan but a feral instinct to keep moving. Sleep-deprived and half-mad with grief, I punched in random coordinates and warped away, the planet shrinking to a dying ember in the rear viewport. My escape wasn't freedom. It was merely a deferral of the sentence they all knew was coming. Yet as I hurtled through the starlit abyss, a cold flame kindled in my gut. Word would spread. The tale of the broken hound, the one who turned on his masters and lived to tell the tale, would slither through the oppressed sectors of their vast empire. My path wasn't clear. I might stumble onto a haven, a pocket of resistance within the consuming darkness, or... I might become a lone wolf, a harbinger of death striking from the shadows, forever a hunted beast. They might track me to the ends of the galaxy, their grip relentless. But even as their phantom hand reached for my throat, I found a grim solace. My name, Wraith, was now synonymous with rebellion, a symbol that outlived any singular battle or world. I'd become a legend they could neither control nor extinguish entirely. 
My war against the Vasari had taken a new shapeless form, fought not with blades or armies, but with the kind of defiance that takes root in the soul, a poison to their relentless hunger for order. No longer their tool, nor a ghost of my former self. I was a wildfire sparked from the ashes of my world, and I would burn until my last breath.